we might have a problem here. More on that coming up, but you're probably here as you're looking for a 15.6 inch basic Chromebook and considering this, the Asus CX-15, and whether it's the one for you. I've been using it over the past few months on and off, and I'm going to give you my full review here, including the good and the bad. And spoiler alert, for me, there's more bad here, but it's all relative to price and your expectations. So let's take a look. You may have seen my original unboxing YouTube short or TikTok. I'll link to that and any other videos I mention in the description of this one. I purchased this as a grade B refurb. I paid £123. That's about $150 US dollars. Condition-wise, it's like new. It had just two battery cycles on it, and as advertised, it didn't come with the original box. The model I have has the Intel Celeron N4500 processor, 4GB of RAM, and 64GB of storage. But as always, there are different options out there, in particular a version with the Intel Pentium Silver N6000 processor to watch out for. Either way, it means it's running 64-bit Chrome OS, and will get updates to Chrome OS until the AUE date of June 2030. I'll link to it at Amazon in the description. It feels pretty plasticky with this smooth top and then the rough texture on the bottom. That might be there to help with the grip, but I just feel like entry-level Chromebooks don't always have to remind you that they're entry-level. Weight-wise, it's 3.95 pounds, about 1.75 kg, which for a Chromebook with a 15.6 inch screen in this price bracket isn't totally unreasonable, but it is heavier than the 15.6 inch Acer I've tested, and that also had a touch screen, which normally adds weight. Port-wise, it's not bad with dual USB-C and a plus a headphone jack and a micro SD card slot. As I showed at the start of the video, the keyboard isn't the best and unfortunately suffers from some flex when put under a little pressure. However, due to the size of the Chromebook, the keys are well spaced and it has a dedicated number pad too. Also on the plus side, it was interesting to see that it features the new design for the everything button, as well as the top row of function keys. By the way, if this review is proving useful or even mildly entertaining so far, please do give the video a like to help others find it too. The trackpad is on a similar level, as in it does the job. I'm not a big fan of the shiny smooth plastic either side of it that you end up resting your wrists on. I have noticed very occasionally that tapping two fingers to effectively right click doesn't always seem to respond as I'd expect first time. For me, it's actually the screen that's the most disappointing part of this machine. It's full HD, but it's TN rather than IPS, so it looks more washed out with weaker colours and poorer viewing angles. If you're right in front of it, as you'd expect to be most of the time, it's perfectly usable, and perhaps if it's just for light browsing and general use at this price point, you're not going to mind. I'll link to a comparison between IPS and TN in the video's description. The screen does go back 180 degrees, as the sticker reminds you, but it's not convertible. Let me know in the comments if this would be a deal breaker for you considering this CX-15. I also use the CX-15 with a new dock I'm testing from Pluggable. It happily ran my two Full HD HP monitors and all of my other peripherals. Power, display out and all connected devices all being ran through the one single USB-C connection is so handy. I'll be posting a separate video on the dock so do consider a sub and taking the bell if you're interested to see that. Performance wise it's absolutely fine and the Celeron N4500 processor as I've shown in some of my other reviews is great for general use and a bit of light gaming like Roblox here. King B asked me in one of the comments on my other videos if I could demo this particular game so here it is. I think I'd recommend going for the PlayStation 4 or 5 controller for Roblox over the Google Stadia controller I'm using here, but you can see more on both of them in my Chromebook gaming playlist. Battery life is decent, maybe it's one upside of that TN screen, it's probably not pulling as much power. I found with light use I'd easily get well into a second day before feeling the need to charge. When I did, I tested it out with the Amazon 45 watt power bank that I've recently showed in one of my YouTube shorts. It worked well as expected, allowing me to both power and charge the Asus CX-15. The speakers are on the bottom and also have this design where they fire forward slightly. They get fairly loud and the quality isn't great as you may expect, but it's in line with the rest of the machine. Here's some audio from one of my other videos, the one I just mentioned, in fact the one about the Amazon Basics 45 watt power bank. It's strong enough to power your Chromebook, MacBook and most laptops whilst they're on as well as charge them. That's great if you're someone like me who often pushes their tech too far. The webcam is a standard 720p camera. Here's a photo taken on it. As with most budget Chromebooks, it's nothing too special. If you're mainly looking to consider the Asus CX-15 due to the larger screen size, as a wildcard, why not consider the supersized Acer 317, as reviewed in this next video. 